Welcome back to the channel guys, Marshall here. So, got a quick video for you guys today. I'm finally gonna get around to doing this uh, build update. It's been quite some time since I've done an update. I think August was the last, uh, the last update that I did over the build itself. So, I've obviously added a lot of stuff since then. So, I'm kind of excited to, to share just kind of an all-encompassing video with you guys of everything I've done from the exterior to the interior. Uh, electrical, um, you know, roof rack, cargo area, that type of thing. So I'm going to try to break it up evenly and kind of make sure that I hit all categories. I'll be sure to drop those as timestamps below so that you guys can kind of easily navigate to the sections that you're most interested in. So uh, let's get outside. We'll start with the exterior, kind of take a walk around, and I'll show you guys what's what. Starting from the front and working my way around, one of the first things that you'll notice is the front bumper. So this is a Road Armor Stealth full width front bumper and it houses two sets of rigid pods along with a 20 inch rigid bar. I'll cover those a bit more in depth on the electrical portion of the video, but on top of that is the Warren VR Evo 10S synthetic rope winch, and it has a Warren cover, a Warren Epic Hoss Fair lead, and a Factor 5.5 Pro Link on the end of the rope. For the wheels and tires, I'm running the full set of five Method 313 wheels in 17 by 8.5 pattern with a plus 25 offset. The methods are wrapped in a set of 35 by 12.5 R17 Nitto Ridge Grappler all-terrain tires. These tires are both mud and snow rated. On the sides here, I replaced the fender vent with a set of turn signals that are spliced to work off of the factory function. For the cowls, you can see the front supports for the front runner extreme roof rack and two sets of rigid pods on top. These pods are mounted on a Baja Designs dual pod mount that is bolted through on top of the front runner bracket. I only recently installed these clearance lights. As you can see, I have four amber lights up front, and once we get around to the rear, I'll show you guys the four red ones that I have installed back there as well. These are all wired to the S-Pod on one switch. Heading up top, you may notice a major change. For now, I've decided to move away from my custom-built 200-watt solar slide that lived below the rack to a fixed, top-rack-mounted, single 100-watt panel, for various reasons. I found I wasn't really getting adequate exposure from the slide, and after taking measurements, I realized that I still had plenty of space up top to accommodate my jerry cans with room to spare for other miscellaneous add-ons. Though the slide system was cool, and I may reintegrate it at some point, this seems like the best choice for now in order to maximize efficiency. Now these are an awesome bit of kit. So these are the Rockhard 4x4 Patriot Up-Angled Sliders. I did put them to use on an obstacle along the Transamerica Trail in Arkansas that otherwise would have scratched my rocker panel to hell. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out. Up next are the rock blocks. So these are XO original size flaps, and if you're looking for a solution to virtually eliminate rock chips on your doors and hinges, along with mud under your door handles, these are your ticket. At the rear, we have perhaps my favorite add-on to date. This is the RSI SmartCap Evo Sport. This thing has been an absolute game changer for my build. There are a couple of things that irk me about it, such as the sticky latches in the cold and the tightness of the rear glass against the tailgate, but overall, it's an absolute win. My build simply would not be the same without it, and it's 770 pounds static roof capacity. If you want more information about the RSI SmartCap Evo, be sure to check out my initial and long-term impression videos. At the rear, I have a Road Armor Stealth winch ready bumper. This bumper supports up to a 10k winch behind the license plate. I will eventually be adding a winch back here to match the one up front. This bumper also does support two rigid light pods and four marker lights that are wired into the factory brake and turd signal functions in place of the rear sensors that my Jeep doesn't have. At the rear of the canopy rack are the four red marker lights that I mentioned earlier. Again, these are wired to the S-Pod on a single switch that controls all eight of these lights. Up top are the two front runner slimline two racks that house my tent at the rear, and solar panels and spare fuel and water at the front. You can see various wires routed along the sides from the rooftop lights. I don't have my jerry can mounts just yet, but those will eventually live on the front rack full time. On the rear rack here, you can see the four front runner quick disconnect rooftop tent legs. These things are honestly great. They make for a quick, toolless install and removal of my iCamper SkyCam Mini. And with that, the right side is pretty much the mirror image of the left side, so that wraps up the exterior. Let's move on to the interior. 
Alright, so starting from the driver's seat, the first thing that we have on the left hand side is the S-Pod HD panel that controls 8 circuits. This controls all of my lights, many of which have an alternate strobe or dimming function, as well as my onboard air system, which is an ARB twin compressor. This panel is mounted on a Carolina Metal Masters grab handle 20mm ball mount and a 6-7 Designs arm and HD panel mount. Moving towards the passenger side, we have the command center that I set up. This part took a good bit of planning, honestly, and piecing together various components. It's a combination of bulletproof mounting solutions basis, 6-7 designs, arms and attachments, and a Carolina Metal Masters passenger grab handle ball mount. I also utilized a Garmin powered cradle for the Garmin InReach Explorer Plus, and an OtterBox and RAM mount combination for my utility tablet, which is a Samsung Galaxy Tab Active 2. I use that primarily for navigation via Gaia, weather tracking, and solar system readouts. All of this is powered by a 6-port DC USB hub that I have switched off of the ignition behind the radio, so that it automatically charges the devices when the vehicle is on, but does not drain the battery once it is switched off. Here we have a part of the innovative JK Products onboard air system. This is the piece that gives you the pressure readout, allows you to set the pressure blow-off point, and includes the bleed valve that allows you to air down and equalize all four tires simultaneously. It uses two tire whips with two ports on each to link all four tires through the compressor. I'll briefly show you guys what this looks like here in a bit. In the rear, behind the driver's seat, I have one of two fire extinguishers. This two and a half pound extinguisher is mounted on a bracketeer mount. Attached to the headrest supports, I have two medical bags. The red bag is my stop the bleed type of bag. I keep quick clot, heavy bandages, tourniquets, and a pocket CPR mask in here. The black bag behind the passenger headrest is more or less my Alchi's bag. This bag contains essentials like Tylenol, Band-Aids, alcohol, a SAM splint, and various other bandages. These bags both have a legible glow-in-the-dark patch that make them easy to identify even when it's dark out. I have used all of these items before responding to various incidents on the road, and they're an important part of my kit. Behind the rear driver's side seat, I have a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. I mainly run this to recharge camera equipment and drone batteries, that type of thing, small electronics. This is run direct to the battery through a 50 amp circuit breaker that's under the hood. I used oversized wiring for this, so I piggybacked off of this wiring for my ARB fridge port in the bed area. I'll point that out here shortly. With just a standard storage bin beneath the rear seats, there's not much to see here. It currently provides extra space for my camp chair, a couple of snatch blocks, and some recovery straps. On all seats and the center console, I have a set of custom-made PRP covers. The seats are composed of a tweed inner portion with heavy-duty Cordura outer sections and marine-grade vinyl accents on the shoulders and rear of the front seats with red stitching throughout. Next to all four seats wrapped around the roll bar are a set of color-matched Firecracker Red GPCA grab handles. They easily tuck up and out of the way when not in use. Heading back to the bed, there is a lot to talk about. Started off with the newest addition, this is the Cargo Glide CG1000 sliding bed system. It extends to about 75% length and can safely hold 1,000 pounds of evenly distributed cargo. Around the perimeter, I have a set of Built Right Industries rails and Molly panels. These things are absolutely fantastic. You can see how much I have on the panels, and yet there is still room for more. Along the left side, I have my utility tools an axe, hatchet, shovel, and an extra set of work gloves. At the rear is the high lift jack, installed on a set of inverted high lift rail mounts so that it clears the cargo glide. I also have a high lift jack base and a tube lifting add-on bracket. On the right hand side, I currently have my 5 pound extinguisher, but I will be relocating all of my straps here as well for easier access. I also plan to add a 5 pound propane tank mount for easy access cooking near the tailgate. In the stock bed outlet location, which my Jeep didn't come with, I repurposed this area as my solar input. I drilled out the panel and installed a flush mount SAE port, which is wired to my solar charge controller, which I'll get to in a minute. And then that's wired onto the dual battery system. Finally, towards the front of the bed, somewhat hidden by my shovel is my ARB fridge port. This port uses a screw-in type connection which my Domitic fridge is compatible with. Again, this port is wired to the battery through a 50 amp circuit breaker. Last but not least back here, I installed a set of 8 cargo lights on the roof of the smart cap. I ran the wires out of the bed through the rear and spliced them into the factory cargo light circuit so that they function as stock. Behind the rear passenger seat is where my solar charge controller lives. 
My Jeep did not come with the factory Bluetooth speaker, so I was more than happy to repurpose this area. I think it worked out pretty well. This MPPT charge controller from Victron is Bluetooth enabled, and then allows me to monitor nearly all aspects of my solar system on my phone or from the tablet up front. Finally, another critical piece of gear lives below the front passenger seat, the innovative JK products and ARB twin compressor onboard air system. As mentioned before, this allows for simultaneous air up or air down and equalization of all four tires. I think that wraps up the interior. Let's move on to the final section and go a bit more in depth with some of the onboard electronics. We'll start off under the hood. Under here, we have the brains of the operation. A Genesis dual battery kit running dual Odyssey 25 series deep cycle batteries. This system provides numerous benefits, including the ability to jump the starting battery off of the auxiliary battery. It really is a great system. It provides a combined 130 amp hours of capacity and is constantly fed by the solar panel up top. Behind the Genesis setup is the S-Pod Bantam system. This controls eight circuits in the Jeep, seven sets of lights, and my air compressor. This thing makes wiring relatively hassle-free and safe. The system is fused and has self-healing circuits in case of failure. To completely disconnect it from the battery, I do have it wired through a 50 amp circuit breaker. The other 50 amp circuit breaker that you can see controls the previously mentioned 600 watt onboard inverter and a 12 volt fridge port. I don't have a dedicated performance section, but I will mention this here while I'm under the hood. So this is the air raid cold air intake. I honestly can't say that it did much for the build, but I did want an easy to clean filter. It also does sound great, and the extra bit of sound does help with picking shift points by ear in my manual transmission Jeep. For the bumper lights, working from outboard to inboard on both sides, I have a set of rigid D-Series Pro amber spot pattern lights, a set of rigid D-Series Pro amber driving pattern lights, and a rigid E-Series Pro 20-inch white hyperspot pattern bar. Altogether, these provide ample amber light down low in the event of inclement weather, and the 20-inch hyperspot bar throws a very focused 5-degree beam a long way downrange. Moving on to the cowls, there are two sets of rigid D-Series Pro white pods. Outboard, turned slightly outward, are two side shooter spot pattern lights. Inboard are driving pattern lights. Together, these lights provide a very generous, nearly 180 degree swath of forward light to fill in gaps between my headlights and the 20 inch hyperspot bar. On the roof racks, near all four corners, I have four rigid SRQ Pro flood pattern lights. These illuminate the left and right sides of the vehicle. These work incredibly well for camp lighting, and they allow me to assess unknown campsites from inside of the vehicle. Embedded in the rear bumper, I have a set of rigid SRM Pro diffuse pattern white lights. These easily illuminate the entire area behind the vehicle. Climbing up top, we'll talk solar. As previously mentioned, I replaced my solar slide. I now have a hard-mounted 100-watt Renogy monocrystalline panel. This panel is run through my Victron Smart Solar MPPT solar charge controller, which then feeds the Genesis dual battery system. The synergy is great, and this setup will provide incredible peace of mind for extended stays at remote campsites. The downside of all of this on the roof racks is that the wires have to go somewhere. All of these rooftop accessories are routed through various areas of the roof rack. Short of drilling through the roof, it's nearly impossible to completely hide wires from the roof, but I think it's managed fairly well with two main drops from the roof down into the area between the cab and the bed. Last but not least on the electronics front are the newly installed clearance and marker lights. The four amber lights in the front and the four red lights in the rear are great for grabbing extra attention during periods of degraded visibility. All eight lights are wired to a single switch, starting with 20 gauge wire and terminating at 12 gauge. This leaves room for expansion if I eventually decide to add more running lights or a set of rock lights. All right, I think that's it guys. Consider yourselves updated on the build. So that's pretty much how it sits as of today. Yeah, I mean, if you guys saw anything that you feel like I may not have covered, I think it hit just about everything, at least every major kind of component. But if you guys saw something that I didn't touch on, or if you guys have any questions, you know, over something in particular, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'll be sure to uh, sure to get back to you guys. I'll be sure to have a have an answer for your question. I love talking to you guys and uh, kind of seeing what you have to say. So thanks again for stopping by. Feel free to subscribe if you guys like this kind of content. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And be sure to hit that bell when you guys do subscribe uh, if you guys want notifications when I post these new videos. So stay tuned for more. As always, good to see you guys. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.